Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Jenny from the Chopping Block, Recipes for Success in Wellness. And today, I don't know if you recognize Tyler, but he was one of our guests during my relationship series. And I brought him back um, to talk about fitness and wellness. And Tyler, I just want to, you know, say, for me, I feel that fitness and wellness and just getting my own like body in shape was like the foundation I believe for success. And it's just cool that like I brought you on, I could probably bring you on for each category that I'm interviewing people <laughs> for seriously, because like, how has that in affected your success in your life? Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me on. I, I love this topic. You're so right. I, I feel like, you know, f fitness and, and your health is the beginning of, of uh, a colorful, beautiful life and in every area, you know, what area of your life can you enjoy to the fullest without your health being in the right place, having tons of energy, feeling alive, you know, being able to walk up the stairs without breathing hard, you know, it's everything. So I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Seriously. And I already lost tra thought, train of thought on your question. What did you ask me? I'm just saying, like, for me, I always, like, in my mind's mind, I would say, you know what, Jen, like, a year ago, I lost 50 pounds since then. Yeah. But since then, like, I always thought to myself, I'm never going to be able to reach the level of success or show up as the partner I want to be or yeah. show up, like, as the per my best self without having my fitness and wellness in order. Um, do you, like... Do you agree with that? Like, was that a big part of like your foundation for success? Um, you got you did yeah. answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways you could answer it, right? And I think that's the beauty of uh, human beings. <laughs> um, but I mean, what is success? You know, what do you define it as? I mean, we all have vastly different lives these days. You know, I mean, I've realized over time being a fitness coach that a lot of people, th their reasons behind wanting to get in better shape or better their health or, or lose weight is usually an emotional reason more so than a physical one. You know, everyone says they want to lose some body fat or, or look a different way or, you know, the Vegas one lose weight. But why? You know, when we dig deeper into that, why we truly find out it's, it's an emotional reason. You know, I don't want to, you know, only wear five things in my closet because I'm uncomfortable and everything else. You know, I, I can't stand to look at myself in the freaking mirror every time I step out of the shower, you know, or I feel like my, my husband over the years, just, he's not physically attracted to me anymore, you know? So those are it, it, deep down their emotional reasons. So it's really cool to see the reason people actually want to make a change for their health. And then through that, they're actually making a, a change for themselves that they also get to feel as well if that makes sense. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. And thank you for bringing that to light. I want to ask you, like, have you always been into fitness or what was like the pivotal point or, or something that got you into this uh, passion of yours? Oh, man. You know, I think it started for me just randomly. Like I, I took weightlifting class in high school and stuff, and I just routinely got into health. And I, and I started to feel a sense of... Um, accomplishment or urgency with myself. Like I never really had a drive or a work ethic towards anything. So for some reason, like weightlifting, I'm like, you know, I feel like I could like do something with my body, like make the best of what I have, you know, and I started to dabble into some, some bodybuilding and I was pushing my own physical limitations, conditioning, you know, cause I did sports when I was young, like a lot of us have, but Mm -hmm. I, I didn't excel in any of them, nor did I appreciate the hard work that had to go into them. You know, the two a days and wrestling and the, the hard training for the football. Like I was a weenie. I didn't look forward to it, you know? So fitness for me was an area where like, I guess it was me versus me. It was just me pushing my own um, capabilities and limitations. And I'm like, yeah, let's for the first time ever in my life, push myself beyond what I, I feel like I could ever do. Beautiful. And that's what got me started. And I just want to ask you, because it's something that I didn't ask the last guest and I've just been thinking about is like, is there something inside of you or something you keep in mind to keep you motivated or to keep your clients motivated when they don't feel like going to the gym or don't feel like staying on track with their, their routine or. Um, so you're asking for me personally or more so for others? For you personally. Yeah. Um, I think I just built up the muscle of like, do what's uncomfortable, you know? So for me, every time I like, I was literally just having this conversation with two others earlier today. Um, when I don't want to do something, that's now the hint to myself to, to go do it, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that's a, a muscle that literally, speaking of health and fitness, it's a muscle that has to be worked, you know? Um, whereas it's easy to get busy or get caught up in, you know, what 
what other things you prioritize in your day that may not be important. And it's easy to just ditch out on even a, something as small as a 20 minute workout. So nowadays when something comes to mind, like, I just don't feel like doing that right now. I'd rather do something else. That to me is now the mental hint to say, okay, now you got to do it. You know, that's the challenge to myself. When I don't want to do it, that's the sign to say, just go do it now. You know, get it out of the way. And yeah. When you can't, you must. Yeah, there you go. Love it. <laughs> and Tyler, what's your specialty? Do you have a specialty in fitness? Is it bodybuilding? It is. Yeah. It, over the years, it's been just competition prep. I love helping people push past their limits. So I love knowing that people were in a similar place as myself. You know, they, they've taken care of themselves. They got to a point where they're like, okay, I've definitely made great strides. Kind of like yourself. You have an amazing journey of, of weight loss and you've come a long way, but then they're kind of like, okay, what's next? Maybe I can, you know, lose even more body fat or step on a, a, a stage where I never thought I'd be in front of people showcasing my body of all things, you know? So that for me was cool to take people down that road of like, okay, let's push the limitations of what you actually can achieve with your body and see what you've got under there. You know, that for me was really cool. So since then I branched out and I've kind of created um, more generalized program, taking, taking the training concept of um, what bodybuilding training provides and uh, branching it out across other goals. You know, now that I've been in fitness for over a decade, I've really got like some secrets and some hacks as to really what can get people further along in a shorter amount of time without the limitations or restrictions. You know, there's so many ways to go about it. There's, there's, there's keto, paleo, there's diets, there's workout programs, there's high intensity interval training. And people are kind of throwing all these different directions and they're kind of like uh, just jumping from thing to thing. So I've kind of created a structure of flexibility where it's like, hey, within the, these guidelines, you can try whatever you want, but still achieve overall success without really like putting too much time and effort into your health and fitness because we all have personal lives and you know a lot of people don't want to research what's actually going to work so when you just give them a general blueprint that so much can fall within it you know that's that's the key in my opinion beautiful and um do you have like all right so i just want to ask you a question because i just mm -hmm. started on this path and like i have this like stupid thing like I'll think that the weight's too much. But then again, it's just like, I'm like, damn, my hands hurt. Or just like these little mental blocks that just like, but then when my mind feels strong, like I just do it anyway. And like. I love that. You got me sweating over here. I'm so excited. I'm literally <laughs> sweating. Like I know it's summer and it's hot out, but like, I just, I love this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So what's your question in saying that? Like you have those those things that come up in the moment. So just, yeah, that, those little stupid things. Like I'll never forget. I was working out in the park with uh, my coach at the time I was boxing. Okay. And I just had this like belief that I couldn't jump on this bench. Mm. And it was just like, just in my mind, I couldn't do it. But then like what I, once I let go of that and just like did it, I was like, holy shit. Like I actually yeah. do that. Yeah. Or like, um, you just let these little creepy thoughts like pop in when you're doing something hard. Um, and then you just like push through it and you're like, wow, I could actually sure. do this. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing because fitness coaching almost turns into like lifestyle coaching in a way because you really realize people's mental blocks or their, their limit limitations or their, their self doubt and their beliefs in themselves like that. It's like in those very moments before you're about to jump on that bench, you know, in your head, that you're like, I can't do this. <laughs> and it's so much harder to actually do it when you don't believe in yourself mentally. You know, when, when you commit to something, like when a skier takes off, like a, like a, if, if a moment of doubt crosses their mind mid air, there's a much greater percentage chance that they're going to, you know, tumble when they fall. Mm -hmm. So other than like some people just need sheer motivation, like hype up, like, you know, you can do this, like get in their face, like tell them what's up. Like, you know, you're capable of this, you know, you're here with me for a reason, you know? Um, but for others, it's almost just bringing the awareness to them and letting them decide for themselves, like, okay, is this the place I want to be in my head right now? Is this the thought I want to be having at this moment that I can't jump on? I'm standing here in front of this bench, I'm supposed <laughs> to jump on it. I want to jump on it, but I'm telling myself in my head that I can't bringing the awareness to that moment, even if they don't accomplish it in that spot or in that time, at least they have the awareness to like, you know what, next time I don't want to react that way. You know, I want to have more faith in myself. I want to believe in me that I can do something that I don't believe I can do. You know, that's how great people create great things in this world. A lot of the times they'd only not only doubt themselves, but they're doubted by others as well. And they still push past, you know, they do it for them. They're not trying to please anybody or, 
or anything. They're doing it because shit, I believe I can. Yeah. You know? and, and that's cool to be, just be the little source of inspiration to put that spark in their head. Like, how did that thought feel? You know, you, you didn't jump on that bench right now because you believed you couldn't do it. You know, whether you tried or not, I mean, is that the ultimate failure? Or are you going to, you know, try to approach it with a different mindset next time? And, you know, it's like, it's like building that muscle again. It's like, yeah, you know, next time maybe I can have a little better thought or when that bad thought creeps in my head, maybe I can think about it again and say, you know what? I remember how shitty that felt last time. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to try telling myself I can do it, you know? Yeah. Fail forward one step at a time. Yeah. And I love that you say like, you just, you pay attention to the thought you let, like you're bringing awareness to it. And then yeah. just knowing that, knowing how to think differently next t- the next time. Yeah, yeah. I know you got me rolling on that one. Sorry for the yeah, long was, answer. No, that was such a good, that was such good insight. I'm glad we went there. Yeah. Um, Thanks for letting us use uh, your bench example. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was so powerful that moment. You know, for me, that was like, it was just when I realized, because sometimes we don't realize that we're thinking these things that are holding us yeah. back, you know, but when you bring the, that awareness to it, it almost like it helps you improve, you yeah. know, man, it's the little yeah. things in life. Yeah. And I, I want to ask you kind of like, um, I mean, most people know the answer to this, but I just want to hear your insight on it. Sure. Um, it's what do you think is more important? Is it um, diet or exercise? Ooh, definitely diet. I think there's a lot more elements that um, diet has effect on with, within your body specifically um, than exercise. I mean, they really do go hand in hand. I mean, if you're able to commit to one, you can commit somewhat to the other. You know, I've even gotten, man, the past six months, especially people are so full of excuses. So on the workout side, I've created like multiple seven to 12 minute workouts. And like, if you don't have seven to 12 minutes a day, dude, you l- literally do not have a life. And they're ass kicking workouts. Like some people are like, I literally felt like I worked out for an hour and a half the day after I was so sore from seven minutes. Like it's kicking your butt in that moment, but seven minutes, come on, get it done people. Yeah. Um, So that's fun to like challenge people that don't have the time or the prioritization. You know, it's almost like a smack in the face. Like you didn't get a seven minute workout in dude. Come on. (laughs) You know, Um, but diet, I mean, yeah, there's so many components that people don't understand within your body. Like think about it, everything you eat, no matter how much or how little, your body's got to digest and break all that down. You know, it's flowing through your bloodstream. It's doing all these things, your liver, your kid, everything's being processed by your body. Um, so what you put in it and how often you put things in it and, and what amounts and, you know, nutrients and all that, it's very important. And it plays a role on how we think, you know, our, our, our mental state and um, so many elements of our lives. So I would say diet definitely holds um, the number one rank over, over exercise. Awesome. And I want to ask you, do you have like, what, what's your, um, what's your diet look like? And if you have a favorite recipe, I don't know if it's still those pancakes. (laughs) (laughs) I do love my protein pancakes. Yeah. Um, good memory by the way. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I'm a huge advocate of flexible dieting, so I'm very loose. So like being self-employed, working from home, my diet is pretty much different every day, but that's the beauty of it. I get a lot of variety and a lot of fun, flavorful, spice in my, my, my nutrition. Um, I have guidelines, you know, I make sure I just get a certain amount of protein and my micronutrients, my vitamins and minerals are there. You know, I get a certain amount of of veggie servings and and fruit each day, but otherwise it's anything's fair game in, in, in quantities. You know, my wife bought a big bucket of peanut M&Ms the other day, you know, I can can enjoy a serving of peanut M&Ms, you know, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's all over the place. And that's the greatest thing is like, that's, what life's all about, you know, especially living in America. I mean, there's so much great food out there. Like you could still enjoy that stuff, you know, in moderation, it's not going to the point where like you don't have it for so long to where like, you can't even be around it because you want it, you know, or you go to social gatherings and you're like eyeballing the party platter while someone's trying to have a conversation with you. You know, it's like the longer you deprive yourself of the stuff you truly want, your body's just going to push you and push you and push you to actually have it, you know? So have those small pieces, you know, develop some discipline and, you'll be way better off. And my life has been awesome because of that. You know, I'm able to stay lean, feel good, look good, and never feel like I have to overdo it or have a cheat day or, yeah. you know, go all in and <laughs> overdo it. <laughs> Can we talk about cheat day? So, you know, it's funny because the last person I interviewed kind of said she doesn't really believe in cheat days. Like she's saying, like, if you're at a party and there's a cake there and you want a piece, like yeah. give yourself some grace, eat it, enjoy every bite. 
and then just pick up and take you know take off where you where you started yeah there, how do you feel about cheat days i would agree yeah that's great insight because um if you do your due diligence um and you 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 routinely take care of yourself by you know allowing yourself to enjoy things that you would think are are deemed as bad but if you do that in moderation you're never gonna need a cheat day like i, I literally can't remember the last time i felt like man, I could just use a day where I can eat whatever I want because I satisfy myself enough on a regular basis with my protein pancakes, my candy apples. You know, if I want, um, I mean, I could eat a candy bar a day and still say, okay, I'm still, you know, a candy bar doesn't have nearly as much detrimental effects as people think. If you enjoy one candy bar a day, that's 180, 200 calories out of your however many thousand calories you're eating in the day. I mean, it's really not a big dent, but people demonize it like it's a bad food you know but if you had if you have a sweet tooth and you enjoy one candy bar a day i'm pretty sure you're i'm pretty sure you're going to keep your your cravings at bay because you're getting a, a nice you know portion of that 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 sweet tooth craving every day you know so i believe that's true as well and cheat meals like like i said earlier you know your body has to digest everything you get it so when people really go hog wild on a day they've eaten good all week monday through friday and then they calorie bomb themselves on saturday i mean that throws your body out of whack you know and all that sugar or whatever the heck you binge ate on your body's got to digest all that and deal with it you know so Our recovery is probably a lot harder yeah than you beat it to a pulp so when you feed your body you know if you ate a slice of cake every day over the course of a week <laughs> rather than eating seven <laughs> slices in one sitting which one sounds more detrimental <laughs> <laughs> spread it out people you know same with like a bucket of protein some people are like you know i've been hammering the protein man and it's like okay what do you think works better a scoop of protein a day or the whole bucket in one sitting <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i want to ask you because you know like i'm in the service industry so i know what kind of toll that took during covid um yeah. are things back open is that is it like full capacity in chicago like how are things going for you yeah. they've been opening up but i think people's lives have changed you know a lot of people are used to working remotely now you know they're at home more than they ever have or they've they're just not going out, let alone going to the gym as much. So alternatives are, are necessary, you know, and that's been a fun way to even challenge myself. Like, okay, how can I, how much can we really do at home? And I've been coming with, up with some really unique exercises to hit areas of your body that you wouldn't think you could target directly, excuse me, without any equipment. Yeah. And so that's the fun, like, you know, okay, let's minimize the actual workout time and maximize what we can do and how effective it can be with nothing. And that's really neat. Um, so yeah, to each their own, but man, the times have changed and it's so cool to help people realize like, Hey, as much as we have more of an excuse to not exercise because of, you know, the restrictions and the closings and gym availability and the whole nine yards, there's still a way. And I have found a way and, um, yeah. it's fun to, fun to share that with people. Yeah. I saw your wife, she was getting it in too at home a lot during COVID with your puppy and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should we should share more and more of it. You know, I've been working so hard behind behind the scenes on my new InstaShred program that I've been working on the past two years, which is incredible. It, it pre-picks, you know, what your scenario is based on where you're at, what you're looking to achieve. And it's just an incredible um, component, including both elements of what you just said. You know, there's a full gym program, full at home program. So it's like getting rid of all the excuses that someone could have. You know, let's give everyone let's give someone everything they could possibly ask for at the best possible price and see if they can say no, you know? And at that yeah. point, it's just like a mental check, like who's to blame, you know? Yeah. And I have a question. So do you work with people outside of like uh, remotely? So it's all online. So I've been all online, Jen, since um, oh. yeah, six years ago. So I was a personal trainer, you know, that was my one and only job. And I just transitioned right from that after six years to the online industry and been doing it ever since. It's all right. Awesome. We'll definitely have to share that with the audience. Uh, you got it. I better connect with you. You got it. Yeah, there's so many people to be helped out there. You know, being confined to my one town was just, it just wasn't enough for me, you know. So it's amazing to see how many people we can touch and impact uh, across the world, even. Wow, definitely. And I want to ask you do you have any, like, um, do you have any words of wisdom or advice for someone who's starting out or um, just something that stuck with you along your journey that you want to share with us? Yeah. I mean, I think even with fitness, like a lot of areas of our life, you know, it, 
the journey truly begins at the end of your comfort zone. You know, when you start having those doubts or, you know, oh man, if I don't know if I could work out five days a week, you know, prove yourself wrong, show yourself you can, you know, you always have to go to the extreme, but like so many people doubt themselves, Jen, and uh, they just don't believe in their capabilities. And that's what actually holds them from even taking that first step or taking action in the first place. So just challenge yourself, you know, the, the, the thoughts, the conversations you're having in your head as to, can you really do that? You know? And then when you start to like do it, you start to believe in yourself so much more. And like, you're so much further ahead than you would have ever thought, you know, you challenge yourself to work out just five days a week, regardless of what you're doing, you know, mm-hmm. challenge yourself to have like a, a complete breakfast for the first time ever, because you've never eaten breakfast. You just got up and let the, let, let the day control you, you know, it's like the coolest little goals that you can set yourself end up turning into like amazing life-changing healthy habits yes oh yeah big time yeah it's amazing that that gets me so excited i love that yeah i think i'm sweating a little less now though which is (laughs) (laughs) i was sweating too i don't know if it's just (laughs) blame it on whatever we want (laughs) amazing so do you have a favorite um workout or something that is easy that you could share What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Like, um, I've got a a 10 minute home leg blaster workout and it is my favorite to share with people because it just, it doesn't crush them. Like it's not overbearing to where they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't go up the stairs, but people are amazed by how effective the workout is within 10 minutes with no equipment. Like that's a, that's a big statement. So I love how perfectly executed it is. takes so little time and and brings such great result. Uh, So I'd, I'd love to share that. Can you share a little bit what that's about? When you say 10 minute blast, I, all I think of is like burpees and like, no, there's a lot of leg variations in it. Um, And that's where I've gotten unique, like safe, effective exercises that are a little more unique that kind of like pique your curiosity too. like, oh, okay. So like we're going to be doing lunges and, and air squats, you know, all right. There might be a few of those in there, but there's a lot bigger of a twist in the, in the exercises that you're like, whoa, this is not only fun and different, but then like by the time you're getting the hang of it, you're on to the next exercise. So the whole workout is like, it's kind of like a hit style workout. You know, you do it, you go on for 20 seconds and it's like, you're cycling between all these exercises and boom, the 10 minutes is over in no time. Yeah. You and know, the I, next day you're like, dang, that, that <laughs> I feel that that works. You know? <laughs> yeah. I thought of that yesterday. I was like selling myself short. And then I'm like, you know what? In this like minute of pain, like suck it up, like push through. It's, it's like a temporary pain. Um, so yeah. it, I feel like a lot of what we're talking about is just, it's really a, a lot about mindset. Um, yeah. and it's, it's inspiring. Is there, is there something that you do or like a habit? Um, I know you went through life mastery and you've been learning yeah. a lot in that space. Is, is there something that really inspires you and just keeps you going? And yeah. I think it's connecting with the right people. You know, I think we all go through phases in life, but like one of my favorite quotes is by Jim Rohn, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And, um, you know, if you're around people that are taking care of them and people that respect others and um, you look up to and you know they're they're truly good people, they mean well and, uh, you know, you've got that good gut feeling, it's, it's so great to be surrounded by them. You know, because I know they're striving towards similar things. Like you said, the whole self-development, going to these events and stuff. It's nice to be around people that are also pursuing that stuff to to better themselves. They're not doing it because they're trying to be different or they're trying to be woo-woo or like they're they're genuinely trying to be good people for themselves and others. You know, when I surround myself around those people consistently, Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like such a better person, you know, and I'm able to take those small steps towards bettering myself. Whereas if I wasn't around those people, I'd probably just fall into like some bad ruts, you know, like get obsessed with some video game or, you know, get caught up in eating out once or twice a day. You know, it's, it, it matters so much who you surround yourself with. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And it's, it's so, it's so true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we all deserve to have some fun, but like the core basis of life is like, you got to set yourself up. So many people are, they truly are givers at heart. Like Mm -hmm. people love humans are. Yeah. 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 We want to please other people. And the only way you can do that is by first taking care of yourself. How can you even begin to take care of other people without taking care of yourself? You know, the better you take care of yourself, the, the, the better you can impact others lives and in a much greater quantity. 
you know, and I've kind of realized that because I was a people pleaser and I was trying to give when I had nothing to give, you know, even my time, like if I was in a bad place and I was like struggling mentally and I was like volunteering or doing something like even my, I, I wasn't there mentally. Like I could be because I was worrying about, you know, taking care of myself and the stress and burden I had on my shoulders. And I wasn't as present as I could have been if I had myself grounded first. Absolutely. That's huge. It's put the oxygen mask on first, right? Like when you're on an airplane. Oh, great example. Yeah. I'm stealing it from Tony. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Um, I have one more question. It slipped my mind. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, I forgot what it was. Darn it. <laughs> nice. oh, 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 I got it. it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, what were you going to say? No, you cannot forget that thought. Hit me. Oh, I got it now. It's locked in. <laughs> I was just going to compliment you on your attire again. I love the matching oh, lipstick with the headband. Yeah. You. And I got my. Oh, yeah. Talk about Tony. <laughs> yeah. Good one. I'm actually going to hit the gym. I, I was going to do five days a week, but I'm going to do six. I'm going to do a little cardio today. Whoa. There you uh, go. Can you tell me what like the average day in Tyler's life looks like? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so nowadays I get up at like 530 ish, you know, I used to get up like 730, but like I get up that early now because not only did I have to work back to getting there, like I'd get up like 15 minutes earlier every day to kind of work up to that. But it's the me time, you know, I can get up and I can meditate a little bit. I foam roll and stretch for about 10 minutes. Um, and it's just a peaceful morning. You know, I get to watch the sun come up and it's like, people don't really realize I like getting up and allowing yourself even a little bit of time. If it's 15 minutes, an hour to each their own, you got to test it through trial and error. Right. But it's, it's cool to like, just be in your own thoughts in the morning, you know, enjoy your cup of coffee or read the paper or, you know, if you want to scroll Facebook, whatever it is, but that's a beautiful time for me, you know, Amazing. and that kind of sets me up for getting my workout done. And then mid morning, I'm usually like full of energy and ready to kind of get my first batch of work done for the day, you know, creating content or adding, um, course material to the Insta shred program. Um, and then from there, the day just kind of puts itself together. You know, I pre-plan my day, but I always leave kind of like a few hour gap for things to come up, you know, for, for phone calls or things that come out of the blue. Or if my wife's off that day, we can go for a nice walk with the dog. You know, I always leave some cushion in my day and not plan it to the max so that I can enjoy the finer things of life too. Love it. So you have a solid like morning routine. That you just sure, yeah. Set you up for the day. Oh, man. That, that sets the tone. I could not imagine anymore, Jen, getting up and like just chilling, crazy, crazily going about the day. Yeah. Or even the opposite. Like, I feel like a lot of people like <laughs> they get up and they're just like moving, like they're starting to get ready for work. And I'm just like, holy crap. Like, I used to get up like I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. What top of my wrecking today. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That allows me to like even more so throughout the day. Like, I can. I can, I can take a deep breath before I get amped up about something or if I'm overwhelmed and I want to react in a nasty way, you know, it's just like grounding yourself in the morning allows you to like just have a better attitude throughout the whole day. I love it. And I just, I wanted to ask you also, is there something that's like a non-negotiable, like you just stick to um, like diet wise, is there like something you have, like for me, like I, you know, I do keto. So like, I know I can't have any bread. I know like, I, yeah. like non-negotiable things that just like yeah. kind of keep you in check. I would just say structure overall. For me, I love using the application My Fitness Pal just because it's a loose way for me to know where I'm at. Okay. I have an idea. I mean, once you've used it for even a week, I mean, it's just so second nature. You, you eat one or two things or you have a lunch. I mean, it takes 30 seconds to punch in your lunch. And then at the end of the day, you can see where you're at. Oh, I barely ate today. Or, oh, I've eaten quite a bit, you know, and it just allows you to kind of dial dial in your nutrition based on where you're at. And so I think using that app, I've noticed whenever I'm using it, I'm just always within the range that I need to be. I'm never, ever overdoing it because I know where I'm at. Beautiful. All right, Tyler, is there anything else you want to share that's on your heart? Any parting words with us? Thanks for, thanks for having me on. You know, I'm going to share with you that 10 minute leg blaster workout. And I'd love for you to share with your audience because it is good. It's, Definitely. Uh, oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in today's day and age, it's just great to see people get rid of their excuses, you know, give themselves a reason to do what they think 
they wouldn't usually be able to do, you know, whether it's wor start working out in general or work out six days a week. Like you said, you don't have to stick to it forever. Just like dance in the rain, man, give new things a try. And, you know, usually when you're taking those small incremental steps, you look ahead, you look back six months ahead and like you're way further than you would have thought just by doing those little things, challenging yourself every day. And it's fun, you know, keeps, keeps it excited. I just, I have this quote written down next to the questions that I wrote out. Okay. And it just says, um, oh, I have two I want to share. One is let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. And I just want to say, like, is there something that, you know, is there a hobby that you've turned into, like, like a hobby that you love that helps you keep active as well? Mm. A hobby that I love, you know, what I love is being creative like as much as a as, i wouldn't say it's a hobby but like every day i'm trying to do something a little different whether it's su surprise the wife in a certain way or uh show recognition towards something like even you like i've been working on compliments a lot more you know just like really taking in those small things in life and appreciating things that people put effort into or you know i mean compliment a woman's nails like just the little things i'm trying to show more signs of recognition for and i think that's kind of like in a way it's be it's become a hobby you know it, it um it, it feeds my soul by feeding into other people's souls and it's kind of become like a fun game for me you know well absolutely yeah so i don't know if that's technically classified as a hobby but i'm gonna classify it as one for me yeah and i think it's just a nice way to spread light and just you know light people up and there you, you know, spread kindness i think that's so important i'd say so yeah all right, I'm gonna ask one more question. Sure. <laughs> I keep saying that. Sure. So after, you know, were you always fit? Like you you improved yourself and then what what was like how long have you been doing the personal training? You said yeah. six years you went into the online space, but yeah, so it's been it was years. To help other people Gosh. within this. You said thirteen years? Thirteen years ago I started as a trainer. You just I haven't really said that in a while. So yeah. Yeah, but no, I had, I had a beginning like a lot of people. I was I was very skinny, you know. I wrestled in high school at 122 pounds, I think. So, you know, over the course of the next couple of years, when I started getting into weightlifting, I actually gained 100 pounds. You know, I gained a lot of bad weight too. Um, I put on some muscle, but I was just like overdoing it, and I got up to like literally 224 pounds. I think was the heaviest. And then I started to settle in and find my sweet spot. You know, so I went through a lot of trial and error too. You know, I was I was overly obsessed, which is what I wrote my book all about. You know, I went from, you know, not appreciating fitness at all, having no work ethic, no drive to being completely overly obsessed um, and, and being a competitive bodybuilder and, you know, never going more than two hours without food. And I'd bring Tupperware full of tilapia to my college classes and just weird stuff. You know, I wouldn't go out at night because like I couldn't ha do the temptation of bad food because it pull me off track and I had to get eight hours of sleep every night. So I was always monitoring when I was home and when I was in bed by, I mean, I was obsessive. You think that's and, a good thing or you're, it seems like it wasn't. No, it wasn't because mentally, like I did not enjoy my teen years. I was so obsessed with just like being a bodybuilder and being this, this fitness nut that I like threw away every other aspect of my life. I was judging people for not being healthy. I was just, it was not a good stage, you know, so I had to learn to balance it out. And that's when I lost like some of that bad weight and started to, to experience flexible dieting and say, okay, I don't have to be that, you know, overboard and I can still look great and feel great and be healthy overall. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, Tyler, I want to thank you again for coming on and um, just all your words of wisdom. I can't wait to rewatch this. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate that. I will definitely share that leg blaster and I hope you give it a try too. Look forward to hearing it. Oh, I will. Later. I'm going to video myself doing it, guys. So if I could do it, you know. <laughs> I say that now and be like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. All right. Well, I will yeah. definitely talk to you soon. And I, I love following your journeys. And it's been a pleasure to get to know you better and learn from you. I do look up to you. Appreciate you as well. Thanks for having me on. Bye, guys. Ciao.